Bakugo has died. But Edgeso sacrificed himself to bring it back. Oh, I'm so sad. <laughs> we at ABD were crying so much. Wait, who is that shot again? <laughs> Deku has found out Bakugo is about to die, and he has entered the final fight in the most badass way possible, going berserk. Let's go! That's right, people. The final fight of My Hero Academia has begun, and Deku reveals his new combined powers to avenge Bakugo's death. In the blue corner, we have the Demon Lord. He's evil for the sake of being evil. Shigaraki in the red corner, we have the green-haired nerd that became a chad. Blessed with the most overpowered quirk in the world. Nicknamed the Crybaby Bitch, Deku! Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble! My Hero Academia Chapter 367 begins with a flashback of Deku meeting up with Stars and Stripes squadron of pilots. They escort him to the battlefield, and Deku grabs onto their jets with Black Whip, thanking them. They explain that they're already disobeying orders by staying in Japan. However, their belief in Deku comes from their little sister Stars and Stripes, who gambled on him as All Might's successor to win. Coming off the theme of the next generation holding the torch to destroy evil in the world by being a beacon of hope, Stars and Stripes is cut from the same cloth as Deku, as she was also a child that was inspired by All Might to create a greater level of peace when he saved her in the two heroes movie. All Might through his heroism and smile gave liberty to those that are oppressed. She was mesmerized by All Might's power that gave her hope to keep on living, even going as far to model her hair like him and even eternally thanks him as a vestige whilst she sacrificed herself to destroy All For One's quirk from the inside. Now in parallel, All For One stated in chapter 364 that he passed on his torch to Shigaraki and the world via his corrupt organizations across the globe as all for one plans to make the demon lord a reality as he believes in chaos to be the normality where everyone can embrace their true freedom through it this ripple effect of selfless acts juxtaposes the other flutters of evil that have the same outcome. As the end of My Hero Academia's story and final arc is about a clash of wills and the moral dichotomy that it presents. In chapter 367, we enter the present time where Deku faces off against the worst villain in My Hero Academia's history. He smashes straight through Shigaraki as Muriel smiles through his tears, witnessing the arrival of their hero, representing a I am here moment just like All Might did. While Shigaraki finds his footing, he thinks to himself about how much stronger Deku has become, as All For One mentions the third user's quirk Far Jin, remembering it from the past, as he had killed all the previous One For All users in the past 150 years. Compared to the previous war and battle against Shigaraki, we know that Deku has been able to increase his power level by training his One For All quirks with his classmates. For example, he he trained his float quirk with the help of Uraraka. He mastered Black Whip through training with Sero in chapter 284 and also copied Froppy's technique with it. Furthermore, Deku also learned how to process multiple quirks at any given time, using three of them at once against Lady Nagan or in his second bout against Muscular in chapter 307. In Deku's last battle with Shigaraki, he ended in a stalemate, but now he has Far Jin giving him Falk's 100% one for all, smokescreen and more. Such abilities like this helped him fight off his entire class after days of constant exhaustion, fighting with no rest. And let's be honest, they would be irrelevant flies just as Shigaraki stated them to be against Deku too. The story nerfed him by being exhausted. None of them are on his power level and they're irrelevant. irrelevant. He's out of line, but he's right. 
To put things into perspective, Deku is only at 45% one for all masters. His quirk for Jin makes him reach a pseudo 100%. To the point that in chapter 317, he claims that at 45%, he can move like All Might did in his prime and use the same level of power. In the last war at 100% one for all, he was fighting at the same level as plus ultra Shigaraki. And ever for God's sake, the number one supposed hero of Japan was a mere support player during that fight. The same endeavor that defeated All For One's weaker form just recently. So overall, 45% of Deku's One For All is already equal to Prime All Might, which the number one hero in the USA stars and stripes even with her quirk stated she can't reach the same level of strength as Prime All Might. But Deku already has at 45% thanks to his multiple 6 quirks that he has unlocked. To sum it up, compared to their previous fight, Deku with the combination of all his quirks and 100% one for all will pretty much double the power level of Prime All Might, becoming the strongest hero to ever exist in the history of the world. Now to add on to this, in chapter 320, it's stated that Deku has gotten way too strong and he has a seriously strong amount of willpower as well. This is what is required to stop All for One from stealing the quirk. And by the way, this was when he was at his weakest point both physically and mentally. Therefore, this new Deku that is going up against Shigaraki is unlike any other we've seen. So that pretty much brings everyone in our community on the same page and up to speed with My Hero Academia's story. Make sure you don't miss out by becoming a Chad and hitting the notification bell as the final fight between Deku and Shigaraki has only just started. In chapter 367, we see Deku's new strength highlighted as his body glows with the energy of the third user as Shigaraki is electrocuted by being sent flying into the electromagnetic barrier around them. He apologizes to everyone for being late, asking if they are okay. Uh, okay Deku, let, let's have a quick check, quick check up everyone. Bruh. looking good Deku. <laughs> He sees Bakugo lying dead on the ground in a distance with his prized All Might card drenched in blood. In complete disarray, Deku sees Best Genius who can hardly keep himself together, causing him to enter a complete pit of despair. As Deku looks around him, he sees everyone injured and passed on the ground. And Shigaraki replies to this saying, Do you like your present? Are you gonna think of a good excuse for being so late? Wasn't it Toga's fault? There was nothing I could do or hmm, maybe you can say the plan went south. Shigaraki essentially attempts to guilt trip Deku but in contrast this perfectly encapsulates the difference between the two. Shigaraki lists of excuses for Deku are actually the villain's true feelings. Shigaraki is the one who came up with such lame excuses for his actions, not Deku for his lack thereof. He was the one who pinned the blame on hero society for neglecting him, turning him into the monster he is now. Instead, he suggests that if Deku relies on those excuses, wouldn't he just be escaping his responsibilities just like they did? This is, again, Shigaraki pinning the blame on others and his entitled mindset, where the story is foreshadowing that the real Tenko Shimura is insecure, and we know for a fact in his childhood, he wishes to be in Deku's shoes and position right now, as his real number one dream was to become a hero, just like his grandma Nana Shimura. He blames society for his outcome, where realistically his father was indeed cruel, but putting the burden on on All Might for example is unjustifiable as these heroes are also human and have feelings. They have their own lives and own downfalls just as the story explored with Deku's. The public hated Deku and didn't trust him until Oraraka gave her a heartfelt speech regarding his humanity and that people should reconsider their tunnel vision outlook on what is right or wrong. And guys think about this holistically, Deku learnt himself 
itself through Lady Nagon. The world of morality is grey. It's not black and white. That is why Deku will attempt to save Shigaraki at the end of the story as he promised to Nana he would. As he was manipulated by the hands of evil this whole time just as Lady Nagant was. These situations perfectly parallel each other which is why Deku's goal is to also reform hero society to make it better for everyone. So tragedies that created people like Hawks, Shigaraki and Darby will occur less often. Now moving back to chapter 367 in retaliation to his constant provoking Deku goes completely batshit crazy <laughs> and berserk. Get this shit off me! Ah! But you see ladies and gentlemen, this is exactly what Shigeraki wants. As he remembers when Deku gets mad, his movements become predictable. Thus, he aims to use this chance to hit him with a counter attack to break his spine. This would render him useless, just like the 99% of the other heroes and characters of this show. Yeah! He's out of line. But he's right. However, the difference this time will be that before, during the war, Deku was fighting to defeat Shigaraki and protect his friends. Whereas now, he will be fighting to save Shigaraki rather than defeat him, which will be the difference he won't expect, as Shigaraki would never expect a hero to actually save him, as he doesn't believe that such a selfless being exists. Suddenly, Mirio pops up from the ground in front of Berserk Deku, telling him, it's alright man, we got the power of friendship man, that's the difference right, we brought you back from being a loser and becoming evil because we're friends, yeah, friendship matters guys, alright I'm joking, <laughs> A violating man. But let's get back to the story. Mirio asks Deku if he feels like he can't forgive himself because he understands that feeling too as he could not save Night Eye. But that's exactly what Shigaraki wants. Mirio reassures him that everything is fine. Ed Shaw is currently bringing Bakugo back to life and so long as he succeeds they haven't lost anything yet. Like bro, even Mirio doesn't care that Ed Shaw is going to die. Neither does Deku. That's how irrelevant that character is. You are going to lose Edshot if he decides to sacrifice himself. But all jokes aside, the reason Mirio refrained from telling Deku that Edshot's impending demise is happening is because he knows it will simply set Deku off and fall into the enemy's trap. Shigaraki says that Mirio is proving his point, that they are escaping reality by coming up with hypothetical ifs and buts with their claims. However, Mirio claps back that they are heroes and if they aren't optimistic about their ideals, who else will be? Deku then remembers Prime All Might talking about that on TV, back when he welcomed the criticism of his hollow words by saying it's a hero's job to bet his life and put those words into practice. The pilot stated that Stars placed her bets on Deku and Banjo telling him that it's okay to get mad but to control his heart as what makes us human is being able to control our emotions by putting them in the right place for the greater good. For example, all of us can feel anger. I get angry when there's filler in anime, right? But it's where you direct that anger which makes a difference. Heroes do just that, whereas in Shigaraki's case, he didn't control his anger at all, thus becoming a little monster known as the Demon King. Looking back holistically at the story, during the Paranormal Liberation War, Deku went berserk after no, Shigaraki no, injured no. Bakugo, but the contrast of that battle and this one is that Deku has collected his thoughts and calmed down. On the other hand, Shigaraki has lost control before he was the overpowering force over all for one. But as Deku slowly brings forth the Shigaraki within that's crying inside, it will create an eternal conflict that will give Deku the upper hand as it will actually become all for one's movements that become hasty and predictable. Thus, this is where we enter the final battle of My Hero Academia. The time when Night Eye's prophecy of Deku defying fate finally comes true. Shigaraki has been groomed by All For One so that only one thing he knows is hating heroes. Remember in chapter 287, All For One is using Shigaraki's immense hatred to manifest a strong enough will that can take the one for all quirk in the vestige world when he attempts to steal it as that is the only way to do so. Shigaraki blames everything on the heroes. However, 
However, Deku will finally become the my hero that finally saves him. At the end of the chapter, we see Deku wipe his tears apologizing to Mirio, but he tells them to save the apology until they've won. You know, typical Deku crying at every occasion that allows it. No wonder people think this guy is a bitch. <laughs> it's a joke, guys. I'm joking. Don't murder me, please. Say that shit again. But watch this video right now which explains every single one for all quirk that Deku has. It's very important to the story right now since the final fight has begun. 